All right, so we're going to hop on over here to my brew. So this is my brew, my Valen Real Estate website I've been working on. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at if we were to build a new community page, okay? So whatever platform you guys are on, if you're on Playster, you're on Boomtown, you're on Brew with my company, you're on General WordPress, whatever it is that you're doing. Um, it's important that you're building out these community pages, okay? So I'm constantly teaching you to build um, homes for sale uh, with a pool and homes for sale, you know, by, by all these different features, but also you want to do these communities. Um, and it, depending on your area, how they work, we have all these master plan communities. And so um, for us, we've got just these big massive communities and inside the big massive communities we've got all these neighborhoods and so I'm spending a lot of time building these out. So here is an example of one. Let's take a look at this Camden Park one here. This is one I think I'm using for the video series for the example if I recall correctly. All right, so here we have a community page. So Camden Park is a specific neighborhood that is in Las Vegas and what I have here is a description, an intro to, um, you know, that's about the community, where it is, the zip code it's in, the year it was built, who the builder was, um, the general size or floor plans of the homes that are there, okay? So um, I want to encourage you guys, whatever community pages you're building on whatever platform that you're doing this, that you're building something like this, because you know, uh, uh, to rank on the search engines, our focus is on the consumer. So if I was a customer and I happen to happen to pull up, you know, I'm looking at, I, I've done my research and I know I want to live in 89123, okay, because Las Vegas is built on zip codes. Yours might be different. You might have just areas of town or, you know, on the other side of the river or however you call it, but in our, uh, we're really built on zip codes. And we have areas of town, northwest, southwest, that type of thing. Well, people looking to live in our neighbor, our area that don't know anything, they actually do look up zip codes. And so it's important to take the time um, to give them, once they look up the zip code, they start looking at neighborhoods. So now they're looking at a neighborhood, they might want to know, does that neighborhood fit what I'm looking for? So you have to ask yourself, if I were looking into that neighborhood, what would be important to me? It might be transportation, it might be what workplaces are nearby, it might be, like, I know, like, what was it, Chicago, where was I at, where everything was about the train, everything was about the train, like, what side of the train and where the train was, so if I was in a neighborhood like that, I'd want to make sure, or a town like that, I'd want to make sure I was including something like that, the schools, if you're able to do that, okay, so you can see here I've got, you know, a pricing table, I've got my intro, I've got my table of contents, I've got real estate listings, I have related properties, I have the school, see this cool, isn't this neat, this three column widget, um, three column content block that we've added to Brew now that, and we're even doing some more things that are really cool to this, but um, I love that. And then, I, and then I've embedded the map. Okay, so now below that, we have sell a house in Camden Park. And I've got my phone number there because although my phone number is in other places, on the website, um, it, we have found that the stronger buyers and sellers will pick up a phone. Like if they're interested in a property now, they're interested in buying or selling now, they'll pick up a phone instead of fill out a form. So I want to make sure that that phone number is still very readily available for people. And um, so that's why that's up there. And then we have this um, page right here where they can actually fill out and request a home value. Okay. Now, the reason why we do this, and you can do this without embedding the tool. You could put um, an image of a form on there. You could use a uh, Google form to request a home value. But I will tell you that in my experience, people are much more likely to fill out a form where they believe they get something instantly back. They're not as likely to fill out a form where they think they're contacting you, and then you're going to call them, and they're going to have to give them all this information. And so something like this works better, but let me show you a, a cheat here. You could actually take a screenshot of this. I'm going to do Command Shift 4 on my Mac, and I could take a screenshot of a form, something. You know, I'm not going to lie. This one says get your home value now, so I might want to revise that, get your home value quickly if it's not immediate, right? 
and then I could embed this image on the page, and then when they click that image, it could go to a form, an Infusionsoft form, a Google form, a Wufu form. So I don't want you to think there's only one way to do this because there's not. There's, if there, you know, I don't want you to think there's only one tool to use because there's not. I have my favorites, and I'll always share those with you, um, but I don't want you to feel like, oh, my gosh, I don't have that much money, so I can't do what Lori does, or I don't have those tools I can't do. That's, that's not true. I don't want you guys to feel that way at all, okay? Um, one thing I am working on, and I need to I need to reach out to Scott directly. This is the um, listings to leads, um, home value offer, and I'll just put this right here in the chat since I don't have Sabrina here. Um, I think it's http www.listings2leads.com slash Fallon. There's my link. Let's check that. Make sure it opened. Yes, okay, that's the right link. That gets you an, an extended free trial on their tool. So I forget what he gave me, but for my link, it's an extra week or something like that for, um, don't quote me, but it's an extra time of the free trial, okay? So if you haven't got that and you want to check out pricing and whatnot. So um, first of all, what this tool does is, well, first, no, let me go back to first of all, because that was second of all. First of all, the reason why we do this a lot of times when people are on your neighborhood page, it's actually a seller. And the reason why is they went online and looked up something like Camden Park home values, Camden Park market report, pri home prices in Camden Park, homes for sale in Camden Park, and they found your page. And the reason why they punched that in is because they're going to kind of do their own self-CMA before contacting a real estate agent. So they're going to go online and look at what other homes in the area are selling for so that they can determine whether or not they think theirs is going to, going to get, they're going to be able to get the price they want for their house. Okay. And tons of sellers do this. And long before they even want to sell, often it's very early in the funnel. So the earlier you can get them to your website, the better so that that relationship is stored between them and your website. And Google starts creating a memory of they were on your website, they clicked, they found value in it. Now, the next time they do a search, you're more likely to come up again. And even better, if they fill out your home value um, request, now you've got them in your funnel and you can start cultivating that relationship. So this is important. Now, um, to plus this, I'll just tell you where we're going with this because we're not there yet, but we're going there. Um, I would have another content block probably above this home value offer, and it would have all the sold data. And it would say homes in Camden Park are on average three bedrooms, 1,400 square feet, and sell for blank a square foot or sell for um, X amount of dollars, okay? Because I think that's a nice version to give them a quick CMA, and it's also good for buyers who are looking for what that, what that potential neighborhood is. And I think to have a list of sold homes is phenomenal on these community pages. What, I, what I'm working on is automation for so much of this. Um, automation without killing the uniqueness of the website at the same time. And so we are working with IDX Broker. I've hired a third, uh, well, we've, we've brought on a third party integrator to work with um, pulling in sold data and creating some of those dynamically. So that's going to be really exciting. But if you have that ability, if you can already go into your, your IDX account and pull up sold listings, and make a list of sold properties or put a grid of sold properties, I highly suggest that you do that as well, okay? Either before or above this call to action. Because again, sellers are looking for market information and you want to appeal to those sellers, okay? So let's show you how we do this. Um, if we were to go in and create, let's just pretend like we were creating a brand new page. Whatever platform you're using, you need to access your WYSIWYG editor. Okay, so you should have the ability to add a blog or a page or something that has a WYSIWYG editor. And let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go to add content and I'm going to go to a general content. This is what a WYSIWYG looks like. What you see is what you get. I talk about it all the time. Okay, if you can see this and you can access this text box or the code box or the HTML box or whatever it says, you can put this code in. You can put what we're about to do in. But you have to find that on your platform. Now, for those of you that have my websites, the brew, you're going to go right here to add content block, and you're going to click on embed code. 
the reason why, and again, this is one of those special features that because I'm building these out of my, we're really developing this website out of my own pain. This is what I wish I had. This is what I wish I had. And so one of the things that I wished I had was the ability to embed an iframe, either a YouTube video, a Google map, a landing page, anything on an iframe that will um, force a certain width of the page. Okay, um, so you're going to use the embed code, and um, you know it's funny I said that. We're going to actually check something out right now, so I may have to send this to my developers when we're done because I think I had to resize the iframe. Let's just take a look. So here's what we do. Um, we're going to put like here's your heading up here. So you're going to put um, find out how much your Camden Park house is worth. Now, if this is going to go in your table of contents, let me go back and show you this table of contents again right here. Be careful about this. I'm noticing some of you guys, when you, uh, when you share your work on Facebook, I oftentimes will click through and look at it just to see how you're doing. And some of you guys are having challenges with these table of contents, okay? If you're using the brew, if you have my brew, the newest one, this table of contents is formatted automatically for you. But if you're still using um, uh, table of contents plus, I think it was called, you need to go in and fix your settings and make sure that you're um, aligned correctly. You can have this be full width of the page. You can have it be small. But if you're making it too small and you've got big, long sentences on mobile, on mobile, see, ignore my background here. This is what happens on mobile. See that table of contents? See how I have see all Camden Park real estate listings and it shoots down to the second line? That tells me my sentence is too long. I need to go back and get rid of see all. They shouldn't be carrying down into a second line. Keep those short. Your table of contents words need to be short. And also, if you picture those on a site link, um, let me see if I can get one of my site links to pull up. Southwest. Las Vegas map. Okay, you see these little extensions here? Those are called site links, and I those are earned in. I didn't buy those in like you do up with the AdWords. These are earned in. See how short they are? Because they're so short, they were able to put one, two, three, four. They're like all these little additional call to actions. That's another reason why you want those table of contents titles to be short. Because if it pulls only one or two of those and it's a long sentence, it won't have any more room to pull more. So shorter is better when it comes to those table of contents. That's just kind of a, a sidebar there. All right. Um, so that's going to be way too long if you're including it in the table of contents. Now, if you have the brew, you can just say no, don't include that in the table of contents, or I'll just shorten it. Camden Park Home Values. And then here in the embed code, I can put the phone number. Call 702-604-7739 to sell your Camden Park property today. Okay, now that below that, I'll put the script, the iframe. Okay, so what we do, we go to our, log into our listings leads account. We go up here to landing pages. We find our landing page we want to embed. And we go to edit. Okay? So I'm going to show you that again. We go to landing pages. We find the landing page that we want to use. We click it. And I have all these custom ones. So then we go down and we edit it. And then we're going to do the embed code. And you know what I think? I think it's I think I this may be having a problem with Chrome. I need to try this in Firefox, but I'm having issues with this, the visuals on um, and I think it's a Chrome issue. So I'm gonna click embed code. Now what we're supposed to be able to do is hide the background, hide the legal legal info, don't display the scroll bar, and then we can take that iframe and then that background stuff wouldn't be in there that's on some of mine. I need to go try that on, um, like, Firefox and see if I can get a di different iframe code there. Um, all right, so let me preview this really quick. Yeah, it's the right width. 
So the, the developers done their, my developers have done their part. So without changing the width or doing anything, the Brew website automatically makes that the right width of the page. On mobile, it would look like this. See that? But you can remove this scroll. There's a couple things. One thing that I like that I, that I like to do is um, control the height. If I change this height right here from 15 from 500 to 1500, and then watch me click preview, there's less scroll. I need to find the exact right dimensions I want that to be because I just started playing with this. Nope. Oh, there's there's a phone ringing. I actually have a landline in my in my place. Isn't that insane? It's because my cell phone gets terrible service here when I'm doing my working with my coaching clients. I can't get um, service. So I had to put in a landline. It's so like weird. Um, okay. So anyway, see this. So now now the page doesn't have this big long scroll. I don't know if you guys know. Do you guys know what I mean? Type in if you know what I mean by it doesn't have that long scroll. Because if you don't change the title, this little page, this thing here, this right here has this scroll that you have to do to get to the whole thing. So if I change the height and make it taller, make it longer, it doesn't have that scroll on the side. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so what I would like to do, though, and I'm going to talk to my t developers and to Scott about this, I would actually like this to not be a big, long form. I actually want it to be a horizontal widget um, with just the form and maybe only, like, from here underneath it so that it's a skinny, um, not skinny, it's a short horizontal form without all of this other stuff in it. Um, so like this, all the, I know you can remove all that background stuff, but I want it to be more like a widget and less like a page at the bottom. Um, in fact, if you look at it on a mobile, let's do that again. Scroll down to mobile. It's really quite perfect except for this. I want to get rid of all that space. So I'm going to work to be tweaking this a little bit. Just It works great, but I just want to optimize it. I'm always about just improving things. Um, I don't own listings to lead, so I have nothing to do with that. But Scott's really good about working with me on um, on on my wish list, and um, and he may already have something more like that. But um, I just want that iframe to to change so it's more like more like I want the I want the form to function like that form, but I want the landing page widget to look more like. Let me see if I can find it. Which one of these is it? Not that one. That one. See how it's got that what is your grant? I just want that little box right there to show up on the bottom of the page. Not all that background stuff. Just that little box. So I'm working on that. But um, whatever tool you have, this is really cool there. So put a form there. Put a an image that clicks. As soon as they click it, it goes to a form. Use a Google form, a WooFoo form, a Brivity page, a Listings to Leads page, uh, whatever it is you got. Okay, but I think it's really important that we are including a home value offer on those community pages. Agreed. That's really all there is to it. Does anybody have any questions about that? Was that um, any, anything hard or anything you need to see again about how I made that work? For those of you that are on this call live, or do you have any direct questions about those community pages? I'm just I'm just stalling because I'm waiting to see if anybody was typing anything in because it's it always takes a minute. There's always a little bit of lag time before you guys type something in. Oh, okay, that's Mike on the call. Instead of Shirley, got it. Welcome, Mike. And thank you, Don. I am feeling better. I have my voice back. I think today's the first day. Well, sort of yesterday, but not enough to make videos. It, it took a while. And, um, and another reason I didn't go to Mega Relief 
just got hit with that terrible cold and with all the mold and stuff, I was really concerned about health issues. Um, okay, so question is, when you have the second email saying there would be a mistake in evaluation, doesn't it get people mad? Okay, I never say there's a mistake. That's not that there's a mistake. Um, I say here's why your home valuation may not be right. And then I go into, I sent you what you asked for, which was an automated calculator computer results. So this is what the computer estimates your house to be. However, the computer doesn't know if your house is different than the one across the street. And so, you know, this is how it's pulling its automated values. We suggest that you have one of us professional real estate agents in your area who are local that know the homes, that know the neighborhoods, come out to give you a, a better estimate. Um, I've had very few people get upset by that, and I think it's because of the delivery. You know, it's saying, you know, th th you, we wanted to give you what you wanted, which was something instant. Because um, you can't give an instant valuation if you haven't seen the house yet or you haven't done your pull to everything. So you gave them what they wanted, and now you're telling them, you're educating them, you're informing them that these digital CMAs are way off, you know, um, so often. And so you, the, the, the bottom line with these home valuation offers, you guys, is that everybody's going to Zillow. Let me show you this for those who weren't on the call maybe before when I did home valuation. So I'm going to go into my favorite keyword tool here, SEMrush. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up top and type in um, home value. All right, now let's look at the view full, full report on this. Top one, Zillow home values, 22,200 monthly searches of people typing in the phrase Zillow home value. They know, they know what Zillow offers and they want it. It doesn't matter how pissed off we all get about home value offers, it's happening. So to, to not offer it would be a mistake because this is what people want and this is where they're going. The best you can do is join in and then counteract it, which is what I do, okay? I'm going to give it to them. I'm going to give them the tool and then I'm going to come back and say, I gave you what you wanted and here's a better way. Let, me, let us come out and see your house. Let us come out and do a comp. Let's give you something more authentic. Most of these people filling out these home valuation tools on, on, from Facebook ads or from you know that type of stuff, they don't have any desire to sell their house. They're just looking up their home value to find out what it might be worth. Where somebody on one of your home pages that's actually looking to sell their house and fills one out is going to be more likely. They're going to care that that home value estimate isn't, isn't exactly as close as it should be, right? So the third one on your home value estimator, look at this one, home value home calculator, home calculators, home value estimate. They understand that if they go online, they can get their home value. So we can't beat that. I mean, Zillow, Zillow's done a fantastic job of making sure consumers know that, that's, that they are the real estate channel and for home to look at homes or to, or to get a home value. It's, you know, it's just, it just is. It just is what it is. Um, none of us have the marketing power to combat that and say why it's not good. You know, we can complain to each other all day long, but it doesn't, it doesn't help us get any further. So, um, and I put my response on video for those of you that, um, that ha haven't seen it. I think it's in the Valen Method system. Um, and it's just, it's just a talking head video. It's just me on a camera saying, hey, um, you know, I sent you your home value estimate and let me tell you really quick why that might be not be as accurate as, as it should be. And then I just go into a, a quick explanation of how these computers pull um, automated calculations and why a local specialist might be better. So putting it on video. Uh, you know, none of this stuff is like a slam dunk, guys. The conversion rate on these home valuation leads is still incredibly low. However, if, it's pla if your placement is correct, and you're making the right offers to the people that are most likely to sell rather than just running a Facebook ad for home values to every homeowner, 
but these are people that are at, were actually Googling something and found your website and they are interested in selling, you're more likely to, to have some of those convert. Um, one of my best commissions of the year was one of these. And it was, um, they Googled uh, what are closing costs when selling a home in Las Vegas. And on that page, I had a call to action to find out how much their home was worth. They filled it out. My, my autopilot ISA um, lead conversion system sent them a text saying, Do you, are you, when are you interested in selling? And they replied. And although they were hard to convert, um, not real trusting at first, not real open to speaking with us at first, husband was pawning it off to the wife, wife was pawning it off to the husband. Um, then they went on vacation. It was one of those, again, I thought, oh, this one's going to drop off too. They did end up calling us. When, well, we called them and followed up when they got back, and they did end up listing and selling for us, and it was double my average commission, so it was a really good one. So these are worth doing. I mean, it doesn't take you that much extra time to embed one of these on your on your pages. And for those that have the brew, let me show you a quick cheat um, before we go here. I am in these like a fiend right now building out my website, and that's why you see a little bit of decline on my website traffic is because I'm rebuilding all these pages and doing redirects. So there's always a little bit of a hit when you're rebuilding like that before the, and then it comes back in a bang with a bang, like a huge boost often. So it's worth taking a little step back to go forward that much faster, right? Um, and so on these, what I'm doing now is once I build a page the way I like it, so let's just say I'm building all of my community pages that are in a specific zip code or all of my community pages that are in the Northeast or Northwest or whatever, or all my community pages near such and such school, whatever it is, I'll save the up here, I'll title this um, um, 89123 community page. And then I save it as a draft right here. And then whenever I want to create a new page off of that, it's like a template. I go to my drafts, so here's how you find it, in case you don't know. You go to your dashboard. I'll open this in a new page, and then we're going to be getting off here in just a second. Okay, and you go to your, um, go to your showcases. Okay, go to your drafts. Then it'll be here. So, for example, here's a great one. Um, Berkeley Face Sierra Vista template is the schools. So uh, all, any of my communities that have these three schools as the schools of that area, I've saved this page now as a draft so I can pull it up as a, like as a template and then not have to retype everything. Um, I do have my development team working on te showcase templates so that you have the option just to save as a template and use it in the future. We also have more options coming with those schools content blocks so that you can save an individual school content block and pull it in. Um, but those are coming. Those are in development phases. So just keep going with what you're doing and enjoy all the bonuses as they roll out, all the special features as they roll out. I'll keep building around my pain, and then you guys get to receive all the benefit of that. <laughs>